Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update. And in the news of this afternoon, solutions in sight for Boston Jerk. Vendors at the Boston Jerk Center have welcomed the plans to form a committee, including representatives from their group, to oversee operations at the popular eatery. That was one of the recommendations made Friday after vendors temporarily blocked the roads to protest the health department's protracted closure of the facility. Vendors had anticipated that they would have been allowed back on the job on Thursday, but the jerk center remained closed for a seventh week. They held a loft of placards Friday morning and used the stones and other debris to make the roads impassable. In the vendor's view, they have complied with the requirements laid out by the health department to facilitate reopening of the jerk center. Among the protesters was JJ, who is popularly called the Seafood King. I do the required work, and all know, no health inspector no pass the work, and they are talking about school and all these things. Who can teach me jerking? He raged. He was referring to health department recommended training for vendors. However, it has not been listed as a prerequisite for the facility to reopen. Vendor William Gallimore was just as annoyed as a JJ. I have done all that was required, fix the slaughterhouse, the drain pipes painted, and the various repairs requested to be done out were carried out and still not allowed to open, he thundered. Aston Williams complained that his slaughterhouse had passed the inspection, so he was confused about why the drug center remains closed. I have all my documents of slaughtering, weight, etc., signed by the public health inspector the day before the closure, and we still closed. We need to come up front and be professional in what we are doing. The solid waste persons don't collect the garbage on time. Although I have a contract with them, I've made a skip to store my garbage and all this now, Williams bemoaned. Councillor Athlete Clary of the Jamaica Labour Party Fairy Hill Division was among those who tried to have order restored during the protest. He suggested that vendors who had fully complied with the health officials' requirements should be allowed to resume operations. I would highly recommend that we do not keep them any longer out of operation as long as they meet the standard because a holiday is coming soon. I hope that they will be open soon as it has been a long time, seven weeks, since they have been closed. Those who are ready give them the go-ahead and those with breaches need to correct it then get the go-ahead. Discretion is needed and I am willing to sit with everybody. I want the people to understand when the thing is right, I will support, and when the thing is wrong, I will not support. So we'll find a way to get it done, he said. Clary has been recommended to spearhead the proposed committee, which in addition to vendors, will be made up of other representatives from the municipal corporation and the state agencies. The parish's medical officer for health, Dr. Sharon Lewis, said that there are still a number of issues left to be rectified. Inspection on October 3, 2024, revealed that many of the breaches were still unremedied. Roughly 47 to 70 percent of the breaches persisted at the jerk stalls, hence they remained closed, she told the Thursday's monthly meeting of the Portland Municipal Corporation. She said various steps had been taken to help vendors improve their work environment, including meetings with other government agencies. In supporting her point, Chief Environmental Officer Lorenzo Hume said meetings were held with representatives from Social Development Corporation, Portland Development Corporation, Hard NSDA Trust, and others to help the vendors establish a benevolent society. For example, Hard NSDA Trust will work with public health inspectors to teach vendors how to write business plans, provide tips on entrepreneurship, facility operation, customer service, occupational health and safety, portion control, specialized food control, as well as working effectively as cooks. Hume pointed out that there will be a series of other training sessions. We will meet with them on October 28 this year to advise them of how the training will take place. Who said that the Boston Drug Center, for theoretical and practical use, likewise for the control environment. We will be having three to four training sessions from November 4 through to the 23rd at the Port Antonia High School's food laboratory, he said. This will not be a requirement for the reopening of the facility. As soon as they have satisfied the requirement, 
for the environmental and the public health issues. Along with the team, and the medical officer for health is satisfied, it will be opened. We have developed an agreement we will sign with them, which is in progress. Once they meet those requirements and sign that agreement, we will carry through, Hume assured. Johnson Smith defends the Prime Minister's decision to take Integrity Commission to court. Kamina Johnson Smith, leader of government business in the Senate, on Friday took a swipe at the parliamentary opposition and other critics of the legal action taken by Prime Minister Andrew Holness against the, the Integrity Commission. Addressing Friday's sitting of the Upper House, Senator Johnson Smith took issue with the comments made by opposition Senator Lambert Brown that the government is not firm enough on corruption, especially corruption involving members of parliament. In his remarks, Mr. Brown touched on the legal battle between the Prime Minister and the Integrity Commission over its investigation into his statutory declarations. In response, Senator Johnson Smith accused the parliamentary opposition of seeking to politicize the matter. The senator, who is also an attorney, expressed a disappointment with the position taken by the commission. There is nothing in this world that is illegal or unlawful about having multiple transactions. Anybody who does business or even operates, um, e even in a personal capacity, if someone is a hard-working, growing person who is seeking to grow their wealth and who is seeking to do better for themselves and their family, is going to have bank transactions. But poker and KYC requirements create the flags where those are, where there's something improper. Because it is this government which passed the Integrity Commission Act. It is this government which provided the budget for the Integrity Commission, the consultancies to set up the establishment. It is this government that ensured that there was a strong institutional framework to fight against corruption, expecting, expecting that it would be fair, expecting that the legal framework would protect persons from any um, weaponization of its tools. Meanwhile, Senator Lambert Brown suggested that the government should have brought the concerns raised by Prime Minister Holness to Parliament instead of taking the matter to court. Among other things, Mr. Holness has asked the Supreme Court to determine whether provision under the Corruption Prevention Act, which deals with illicit enrichment, is unconstitutional and should be struck down. But according to Senator Brown, with the public having a negative view of politicians, the issues outlined in the Prime Minister's legal filings in relation to the Corruption Prevention Act should instead be placed before the Parliament for debate. It cannot be that parliamentarians feel that the, uh, the 2001 or thereabout legislation on corruption prevention dealing with illicit enrichment, dealing with illicit enrichment, it cannot be that we as parliamentarians want to see that offence of illicit enrichment removed from the statute book of the country. It must be an offence, especially since we set up an integrity commission to address issues like those. And we have seen annual reports from the Integrity Commission. First saying there are six and then there are two more. That eight among us, eight among us, are being investigated. Guys, thank you for watching. See you this evening at 6 p.m. for another news update.